and welcome to the Environmental Update. I'm your host, Brian Hoppe. We're still dealing with the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, and we hope all those watching are safe and remain healthy. As a result, we're having to conduct this show remotely. In this episode, we'll hear from two members of the Lower Marion Environmental Advisory Council and from one of the 2020 Lower Marion Go for the Green Award recipients. First off, it's my pleasure to introduce two of the newest Lower Marion Township volunteers who've been asked to serve on the EAC, Nancy Winkler and Beth Young. Welcome Nancy and Beth and congratulations on your appointments to the EAC. Thank you. Thank you, hi. So why don't we take a few seconds here and introduce yourselves to our audience and, and tell us a little bit about your background. Nancy, why don't you go first? Thanks for having me and um, I appreciate it. Uh, I've lived in Lower Marion Township since uh, 1985. And um, I'm an environmentalist at heart, kind of a gardener, hiker, cyclist, and aspiring birder. Um, and um, in terms of my other activities in the township, I was uh, one of the original founding members of the Narberth Area Garden Club and uh, one of the early leaders developing the Kenwood Heritage Trail and founded the Friends of the Kenwood Heritage Trail and served as its president for a number of years. Um, and um, so from a, from a professional perspective, I'm retired. I was in uh, finance, serving as financial advisor to state and local governments um, and um, worked on a wide variety of different financial management problems for governments. Thank you, Nancy. How about you, Beth? Hi, um, I've had a lifelong interest in uh, environmental issues. I grew up, I guess, in the generation right after uh, Earth Day and lots of um, environmental legislation that I was lucky enough to have teachers share with me. And I had hoped throughout my life to see increasing progress that I have not seen. And I would say that that was my motivation to become involved with the EAC because uh, throughout my life, I've seen clear science that is directing us where we need to go and uh, a lot of foot dragging on the part of people who don't want to believe that we need to protect the environment. So for me to have some kind of civic engagement that brings together township leadership and the citizens of the township so that we can all make progress is something that I would like to be involved in. That's great, Beth. And you actually beat me to, uh, to the punch for what my next question was going to be. So I'll just go right back over to Nancy. And, and I'll, first I'll say to both of you though, when, when I was a member of the EAC, you both would frequently attend our meetings and working groups and, and events. And, and thank you both for doing that. Even though you weren't you know, asked to serve on the EAC, you still gave of your time and participated in that. That's just great. That's what we um, really enjoy as part of the EAC is getting our residents engaged in, in our activities. Um, but Nancy, what motivated you to be part of the EAC? Well, um, well, first of all, I'm grateful to be able to be part of this effort. Um, like Beth, I feel that uh, protecting the environment at this point is just urgent. It's time sensitive. I think we need to think big and act big. I think we need to move now. Um, personally, I got involved initially because uh, I'd been advocating for the township to adopt an energy transition plan where they would establish goals and timetables for transitioning um, to uh, clean renewable energy. But really at the core, what I believe is that local government has a huge impact in the way we need to address all of the environmental challenges that are before us. Local government has a lot of tools and is very close to its citizens. And I, so I, I think that there's a real opportunity to think about how we can collaborate with our government, our institutions, our businesses and our citizens. And I'm really hopeful that we're now at a place where we can all make this as urgent in all our lives as it, I think it truly needs to be. Thank you, Nancy. And, and yeah. I'll ask the both of you, um, 
there are a lot of different environmental issues, uh, you know, not only affecting our globe but in our country and uh, but but also our township. What do you think are the most important environmental issues facing Lower Marion Township at this time? Beth, why don't we start with you? So we are a, an inner ring suburb, very densely settled, and we surround or are on the perimeter of America's sixth largest city. I think you can sum it up in one word, which is space. Uh, open space, green space, and space for our waste to go. These are all issues that I think are our greatest concerns in Lower Marion because space is not something that is infinitely available. And uh, on the eastern half of the United States, we've are already seen that. We've seen increases in tipping fees when it comes to uh, waste disposal. We've seen lack of green space for people to have recreation. And we have seen reduction of open space and areas with natural resources that can clean our air and water and uh, reduce problems like stormwater and flooding. So I think that space is really our single biggest issue and it's gonna come down to waste reduction and natural resource management and thinking about zoning and other settlement issues. Thank you, Beth. Nancy, what about you? Uh, well, I agree with everything that Beth is saying, but if I have to choose one item, it, for me, it's transitioning to a sustainable community in the face of global warming and habitat destruction that is global and also local. Um, so tactically, I think that the transition to 100% clean renewable energy by the top deadlines in the Paris, Peace Accord, Paris Accords is um, the most important thing that we can focus on. And it really subsumes many of the other things that um, Beth was addressing as well. Um, we need to get to net zero carbon emissions by 2045, 2050 um, at the latest. And I choose clean energy in part because of the level of control and influence that we have at the local level. And frankly, because fossil fuel consumption, it, its co contribution to climate and habitat destruction is second to none. In 2019, carbon dioxide emissions from fossil fuel combustion was about 75% of the total human greenhouse gas uh, emissions in the United States. So, so it's just the biggest single problem. Um, and I also think um, that we can get there, that the technology is there, the solutions are there, and that we need to, to educate our community and work with our commissioners to put a program in place uh, to be there to get it done. Thank you. You know, and it, it, it's such a you know for most people, it, it and well, actually, yeah, for most people, it's a very daunting challenge to look at you know climate change on a global scale and and what we can do as individuals at the local level to to make a difference. It doesn't seem like we can you know move that needle an ounce if if we're um, just by ourselves doing things. And but. I look at what the what Lower Marion Township and Montgomery County are doing with the um, with the with the EAC and coming up with a a plan to address climate change uh, and our sustainability plan. What can our residents do? How can they get involved? And what can they do as part of their part to improve our environment? Nancy, why don't we go with you? Uh, sure. Um, great question, and one that I've been thinking a lot about. And um, so what I've done is work with a group of other residents um, that have come together. You've named our group Climate Action Lower Marion. And we meet the third Thursday of the month. And we are about to roll out a website that we believe will help residents who are trying to figure out what can they do and to give them lots of options, because I don't think there is any one way to go. There's lots of different options. So it's climateactionlm.org, and we have a Facebook page. How about you, Beth? I think that mindful decision-making is the most important thing that residents can do. They can consider a genuine cost accounting uh, on a comprehensive level when they make decisions, even around their home. 
things like rain barrels, things like how are you going to put the property around you in permeable or impermeable surfaces? Are you going to plant a tree because you know it's engineering infrastructure and also carbon sequestration in addition to something that might enhance the value of your home and reduce your heating bills? So we make a lot of small decisions that can have a very large impact. As long as we look at them in a comprehensive way, we can really be mindful about that decision making. And also, I think um, we have the mantra of you know the three R's, and I think there are four R's. And the first R is refuse, because there are lots of things that come into our lives that we don't need, and we don't need to accept those things. We just don't need to accumulate. So uh, refuse should be number one in the hierarchy. And uh, recycle is way down at the bottom. So reusing and reducing, those are much more key after refusing. That's great. And, and, and thank you, Nancy and Beth, for, for sharing your thoughts with us today. And again, congratulations on your appointments to the EAC. Thank you. Thank it's, time, you. it's time for us to take a short break. When we come back, We'll meet with one of the 2020 Lower Marion Go for the Green awardees, Gwen Nolan of Mother Compost. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Environmental Update. I'm your host, Brian Hoppe. The Environmental Advisory Council established an awards program in 2008 to raise environmental awareness throughout Lower Marion Township and to highlight environmental achievements in multiple categories. The EAC held their 13th annual Go for the Green Awards program virtually in September 2020. We're very fortunate to have this year's winner in the commercial category, Gwen Nolan, of mother, comp of mother Compost with us today. Welcome, Gwen, and congratulations. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me today. I'm excited to be here. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself and tell the audience a little bit about your background? Absolutely. So I'm Gwen Nolan. Uh, I am a Philadelphia suburbs native. I grew up in Berwyn, Malvern area. I went to Penn State main campus uh, and studied public relations and Spanish there. Um, and moved to New York for a few years after college to work in PR, uh, moved into recruiting for financial services, uh, and then I got married and moved home to Philadelphia in January of 2011 and uh, began working at a financial services firm in Newtown Square in uh, client service and spent the last 10 years there up till this past spring. Um, my last role was the director of advisory services, so helping to manage a bunch of the teams there that support the advisors. Um, and then I started Mother Compost in late 2018. Um, and now that's, that's my full-time everyday job, and that's where we are. So what drove you to start Mother Compost? You know, it was really two things. So I did a lot of, I have just been learning more about trash and recycling. And then I realized composting, to me, it just made sense. It's the recycling of food waste. It seems like the next step, the evolution of recycling. Um, so, you know, taking those food nutrients, getting them back to the soil. Um, so I attempted to start at home. And I have to say it was, it was a mixed bag. Um, there was some successes and, and some weird stuff that happened. Um, so I realized that you know, a lot of people I think would compost, but it's tricky and it's another thing to manage. So I thought a service that made it really easy to compost um, would be something that people in this area would enjoy. And I thought that it would get more people composting and keep those nutrients out of the landfills. Um, so that's kind of where it all started. So what kind of services do you offer? I mean, I've seen folks with compost bins in their backyard. Um, I know of a service I have, you know, in terms of full disclosure, I have a couple of your buckets in my garage right now. They're going out tonight. Um, but what other, what services do you offer folks in, in Lower Marion Township and beyond? So, um, so we're pretty much in Ro Lower Marion, Radnor and Haverford at this time, a little TE. Um, and what we offer is really a composting service. So organic, 
materials collection or compostable material collection. So we provide you a container, we pick it up every other week, we give you a designated day, we send reminders before so you don't forget because nobody really wants those things on hand. Uh, we take it to Lim Villa Orchard, uh, which has a commercial processing site on the farm. And we partner with a company called Kitchen Harvest to process all the materials. And then we offer all of our members up to 60 pounds of compost. So essentially, our members can see the entire circle without having to have a pile in their backyard, which, you know, we also have people in, in apartments who don't have the space. Um, so it allows people, I think, to compost easily. Uh, the other benefit is since we are composting commercially, we can accept a lot of materials that you can't put in a backyard system, like high fat content. Uh, dairy, baked goods, um, things that would absolutely overwhelm your pile in the backyard, we can take. So I think it also makes it less stressful uh, because you can pretty much just throw a lot more in there and not be as overly concerned with what you're putting in the pile. So okay. that's, that's pretty much what we do. We also sell compost seasonally, uh, not all the time. So what what area is covered by your service area? So we're pretty much in the towns along Lancaster Avenue from, I would say, City Avenue out to around the Berwyn train station. Um, but that includes from Balakin Wood out to Drexel Hill, where we are. Um, so we're kind of deep along that Lancaster Avenue. But that's pretty much, those are pretty much the stretch of town. So we're in Gladwin, Bryn Mawr, Haverford, Devon, Radnor. Wayne, uh, but w there's parts of Wayne that we're not in yet because it goes over 202. But that's that's pretty much the scope right now, and we're really focused not on growing from a geographic standpoint, but growing from a density standpoint. So, can we get everyone in Lower Marion composting? Can we get everyone in you know Haverford Township composting? And that's kind of our focus. Now. All right. So we're we're you know the township is undertaking a. Uh... Uh, sustainability plan. Um, they're they're in the process of forming the the teams to write it. The county has been engaged to help us. Montgomery County has been engaged to help us write it, uh, as long with the with the township staff. And a big part of it is reducing the amount of solid waste that uh, our residents generate. Is there anything else that that individuals can do besides composting? Um, to, to help reduce solid waste? And, and further, why is composting so important? Well, that's such a great question. So composting is really important because the largest single item in landfills, I think it's roughly 22 to almost 30% is organic waste. So imagine if we just sucked that out of the system of what's going to a landfill. Um, that would be a dramatic decrease across the board. Uh, so I think composting is a huge factor, but obviously I'm sort of a compost nerd. <laughs> um, but other things people can do, you know, the zero waste and less waste is, is a really intimidating kind of undertaking, I think, for a lot of people. How do I go from where I am today where to that kind of zero waste moment? Uh, but I always recommend starting small, you know, you shop local at, at farmers markets or great organizations like Philly Food Works. Uh, there's invariably going to be less packaging. Uh, use a reusable water bottle or coffee mug. Um, you know, just baby steps to try to get, you know, get yourself there. Um, because again, I think zero waste can be really intimidating and causes people to be like, I just, I can't, can't make it work. If I have to, you know, have my straw with me at all times. I'm just I'm out. So. <laughs> Um, that's it. Start small, you know, keep it local when you can um, and combo. <laughs> so the um, it was interesting. You made you, you gave reference to how much organic material is in landfills and that organic material is what produces as it breaks down. It produces the methane, which contributes to global warming. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be very interested in um, hearing what folks, if they're, if they're not going to take up your service, uh, but what they could do in their backyard. Do you have any tips for folks to compost in their backyard if they wanted to? Absolutely. And I, I teach like a composting one-on-one -on -one class because I really don't care. You don't have to use our service. You could like, it's, it's great to do it at home. And honestly, you know, it's the most efficient. You're, it's not being trucked anywhere. You're walking out back. 
Um, so I would say pick your vessel, you know, it depends on your neighbors. If you want to do a closed system, like what the township offers through their website, those black containers, tumblers. Um, my, my warning on tumblers is you will almost always need two. So mentally get your head around that because the location of two can be trickier than one. Uh, because with tumblers, you really have to leave one alone and let it sit and you can't add new materials like a cake. Like you can't throw ingredients in while it's in the oven. You need to give it a minute. Um, so that's from a space standpoint. And, uh, you know, as long as you keep the mix right, you know, more carbon materials to nitrogen, you won't get odors, you won't have pest issues. Um, in our climate, it's a little trickier because when it gets freezing, things are gonna kind of slow down quite a bit, um, unless you're doing a really good job keeping heat. Um, but, you know, the, the other thing with composting, it's almost like working out. Like, which goal? Are you right now trying to have compost to put in your garden in April? You're going to need to manage your pile a little differently if your only goal, unless you're, or if your only goal is to just redirect your food waste, eventually it will break down. Like that's the natural process. It's going to work. It just may take longer. So you sort of have to have the right mentality and know what you're trying to accomplish uh, because that's the most commonly people are like, I'm putting stuff in, but nothing's happening. It's not, it's taking forever. And, you know, it really just, it depends. So the, I would say this, you, you, you said, well, you don't have to use my service, but again, I am a customer. And I will say that for those who are interested in a service like Gwen's and, and Mother Compost, it is so easy to use, to just throw the stuff in a bucket, have it down at the end of your driveway. And then the, magically, it's like the magic cabinet, new buckets appear and they're clean. Right. Um, but I, I do want to thank you, Gwen, um, and congratulate you again on your Go for the Green Award. Um, and, and just thank you for sharing such great information about Mother Compost and what our residents can do to lessen the impacts of our daily activities and generation of solid waste. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Brian. I really appreciate the time. Have a great day. Thanks. Well, that does it for the winter edition of the Environmental Update. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the show. And if you have any ideas for topics uh, for our show, please email them to the email address below. And that does it for our winter episode. We'll see you again in the spring. Stay healthy, stay safe.